Okay, one of the main themes in Of Mice and Men is loneliness, of course. Um, and if you think about it, at the beginning, you've got these three partnerships or companions, haven't you? You've got Candy and his dog, Curly and his wife, and of course, George and Lenny. Um, by the end of it, in each case, one of them is dead. So uh, Candy's dog is dead and Curly's wife and Lenny. Okay, so if you think about it, you're moving from uh, a position of companionship and friendship and partnership to isolation and solitude and, and, and loneliness. That's the trajectory of the novel. That's the direction that everything is going, every relationship. Okay, um, if you're in an exam, though, always try to look at the question and think broadly, think widely. Just spend a few minutes just branching out and seeing where you can go with it. So if you had a question, for instance, about friendship or relationships, the obvious thing to do would be to think, OK, who are friends in the novel? And then you'd think George and Lenny. And of course, you could write a lot about their friendship, but also think, well, OK, so what's the opposite of friendship? And that's loneliness, isn't it? So if you think about it, um, that's really important to deal with, isn't it? Because if you, the moment you start talking about loneliness, you're talking about, well, how important friendship is. Because what happens if you don't have friendship? What kind of impact does that have on people's lives? And that's really what Steinbeck is dealing with, isn't he? He's talking about a world where people, actually apart from very few instances like George and Lenny, where people don't have relationships that are, uh, you know, consistent and of any real depth. They lead these isolated, lonely lives because of their uh, because they're migrant workers who will lead these sort of transitory itinerant lifestyles where they're moving around from place to place they can never sort of settle down and um, and form consistent stable friendships and, and start a family or anything like that. So if you're going to be talking about friendship and relationships then actually dealing with the opposite of that is a really important thing to do because you're talking about what happens where there is no friendship. What's the, what are the consequences of it? Today we're going to look at just two or three pages in chapter four, where Crooks talks about isolation quite a lot. And he's a really interesting character to look at in that respect, of course, because in many ways, you could argue with this, I know, but in many ways, he's perhaps the most isolated. Um, he's allowed, to, he works in the barn, doesn't he, with the animals and so on. And he goes out and he plays horseshoes with the other men. Um, but actually, you suspect that in the evenings, he's just in his room on his own because he's not allowed in the bunkhouse with the other men. And so um, he actually says the only person that's ever come into his room is Slim. So Saturday night when when Lenny comes in and then uh, Candy and Curly's wife, of course, um, that's that's a real exception. This is a freak moment. OK, this never normally happens. And so Crooks talks quite a lot about isolation uh, in that chapter. Um, the first key quote that I think we need to look at is on the bottom of page 103, um, where it says, Crook's face lighted with pleasure in his torture. And that's a quote that I think I would learn. Crook's face lighted with pleasure in his torture. And the reason why he's, Crook's face is in, why he's enjoying torturing Lenny at this moment is that he realises that he has the upper hand for once in his life. He's not the victim. He has... Um, a degree of power over Lenny because he has in, he's intellectually superior. He realises that Lenny has learning difficulties and so he can abuse that position. And for once, he can be the one with the power. Someone else can be the victim. And he's enjoying that moment, isn't he, where he can taunt and he can abuse that position of power. Normally, of course, he, he's the weakest. He's the least powerful. He's the bottom of that social hierarchy. And that's really sad in a way, isn't it? Because I think what it kind of shows is that it tells us something about America in the 1930s, that it's a harsh, brutal society. It's a ruthless society um, where people will, will take any opportunity to assert themselves, to assert their dominance, to ensure their survival. Any opportunity to, you know, raise yourself up above someone else and you'll seize it. OK, because people are, are desperate for power because they're because it's it's a society where people are, are normally so insecure because they have no money. They have no security. Um, and it's almost like as if it's ingrained into people's minds, isn't it? It's like um, it's like their default position 
is to grasp power, to oppress other people. So it's kind of, I think Steinbeck is telling us quite a lot about society in America in the 1930s there. Crooks then is enjoying doing to Lenny what others have done to him so often, isn't he? But he then, he then backs down. Remember, Lenny kind of sort of threatens violence, doesn't he? And about a page later, we're then told, Crooks said gently, maybe you can see now. You got George. You know he's going to come back. Suppose you didn't have nobody. Suppose you couldn't go into the bunkhouse and play rummy because you was black. How'd you like that? Suppose you had to sit out here and read books. Sure, you could play horseshoes till it got dark, but then you got to read books. Books ain't no good. A guy needs somebody to be n near him. He whined. A guy goes nuts if he ain't got nobody. Don't make no difference who the guy is. As long as he's with you. I tell you, he cried. I tell you, a guy gets too lonely and he gets sick. Um, and I just think it's worth looking at a few lines in that bit that Crook, where Crooks is talking. First of all, it says, Crooks said gently. And one of the things that I think is really interesting here is that Steinbeck constantly in the novel kind of shifts our sympathies. He, he manipulates the way in which we're seeing characters. Um, he never makes it simplistic, never makes it easy in terms of how he represents characters. There are always complexities. There are always sort of subtleties and, 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 and you're never quite sure how you should respond to someone. Take, take Kelly's wife, for instance. You know, on the one hand, you feel a lot of sympathy for her because she's trapped in this dysfunctional marriage and she's, she's treated as an object in the possession by her husband and so on. On the other hand, look at her racism towards crooks in chapter four. Um, you know, when she says, I could get you strung up on a tree so easy, they ain't even funny. How do you, how do you respond to her? Do you know what I mean? It can be. You think of him as a, a sweet old man, don't you? And, and to a large extent, you view him in a sympathetic light. Um, but on the other hand, some of the way he, which he talks to Curly's wife is really sexist, isn't it? And the way he actually he refers to crooks, he uses the N-word repeatedly, doesn't he? And I know that's within the context of the time. But, you know, Candy is not a pure, innocent character by any means, OK? So I think Steinbeck constantly plays with the way in which we're responding to characters. And Crooks is an example here. Generally, of course, because he's a vulnerable character, we feel sympathy for him when we view him in a sympathetic light. Um, but at that moment, Crook's face lighted with pleasure in his torture, kind of thinking, no, you can't enjoy abusing your position of power over Lenny. I, I, I don't know how to respond to that. Can you see what I mean? Um, but here, Steinbeck's kind of pulling that back, isn't he? He's kind of like saying, no, I do want you to feel sympathy for Crooks, okay? So it's Crooks said gently. Once again, look at the adverbs. Steinbeck always uses an adverb, okay? Crooks said gently. Maybe you can see now, you got George, okay? It's something that makes Lenny different, isn't it? He has a friend. No one else has a friend. In this world of isolation and loneliness, George and Lenny have something very different, very unusual, don't they? Crooks then is very, very isolated, isn't he? He's a victim of segregation, basically, isn't he? Um, <clears throat> he says, suppose you couldn't go in the bunkhouse because you was black. Um, and that gives you the opportunity to talk about segregation not just within the context of the ranch here, in terms of crooks, but in a much wider context. Remember, Steinbeck spoke about what happened on the ranch, and he spoke about it as a microcosm, okay, or a microcosmic representation of reality. So what's happening in the ranch is a little mini version of what's happening on a much bigger level in America in the 1930s. So crooks isn't just crooks. Crooks is black people in 1930s America. Curly's wife isn't just Curly's wife. She's married women in 1930s America. George and Lenny aren't just George and Lenny, they're migrant workers. In that. Do you know what I mean? Each character is like a sort of a, a sector of society, if you like, or represents them in some way. And so when you're talking about crooks being shoved off in his room and not allowed to be in the bunkhouse with the other man, that gives you the opportunity to talk about segregation in a kind of wider social, historical, cultural context and start talking about the Jim Crow laws, for instance, doesn't that? Um, but then look at it more on a personal level as well. Um, Crooks then says, a guy gets nuts if he ain't got nobody. I think there's a real focus here. Steinbeck is talking about 
the impact of isolation, of lack of friendship and relationship on the individual. Um, and it reminds me of this bit, um, kind of like sort of about 40 pages earlier, when Slim is talking. I don't know if you remember this bit, but when Slim is, and George are talking, at one point Slim says, they get mean. He's talking about migrant workers who don't travel around with each other, but they just travel around on their own. And Slim says, they get mean. They get so they don't want to talk to nobody. They get mean. They get so they don't want to talk to nobody. Um, and I think there's this kind of like sort of suggestion, isn't there, that, you know, that's what happens when you become completely isolated, when you're completely on your own. It makes you mean. It drives you nuts. Crooks then says, doesn't he, he says, a guy gets too lonely. <coughs> a guy gets too lonely and he gets sick. Um, Crooks seems to be suggesting he's losing his grip on reality. At one point he starts talking about, you know, sometimes it feels like I'm seeing things. Um, he says, um, I didn't mean to scare you. He'll come back. I was just talking about myself. A guy sits alone out here at night, maybe reading books or thinking of stuff like that. Sometimes he gets thinking and he got nothing to tell himself what's so and what ain't so. He's kind of lose. He says, you know, if you're on your own that long, you start to lose your sense of perspective, your sense of reality. Yeah. Maybe if he sees something, you don't know whether it's right or not. He can't turn to some other guy and ask him if he sees it too. He can't tell. He got nothing to measure by. I seen things out here. I wasn't drunk. I don't know if I was asleep. If some guy was with me, he could tell me if I was asleep and then it will be all right. But I just don't know. Can you see Crooks is he's losing his sense of perspective. He's losing his grip on reality. And so I think Steinbeck is talking quite a lot here about the impact of isolation, the impact of lack of friendship and relationship on the individual. There's a big focus on mental health, isn't there? Isolation causes hostility to others. It causes resentment and anger. And it causes, it has a big impact on your mental health. It causes you to feel withdrawn, to lose your grip on reality, to lose your perspective. If you found that useful, then please like it and subscribe to English Gorillas.